I'm Ying Zeng, the Director of Asian Initiatives at Western Michigan University's Hennig Institute for Global Education. I also serve as the Director of Timothy Lai Center for Chinese Studies. Welcome to Timothy Lai Center's webinar series of spring 2022. Our theme for this semester's webinar is Food in China. Today, we are honored to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Edward Wang, Wang Qinjia Jiaoshou, Professor of History and Coordinator of Asian Studies at Rowan University. I would like to invite Dr. Victor Xiong, Professor of History and Distinguished Faculty Scholar, to introduce Dr. Wang to us. Xiong Lao Shi Oh, hi. Um, well, uh, Dr. Wang and I have known each other for a long time. I remember probably two decades ago when he came to Western for a campus interview and uh, he got the job. So we made an offer, but, uh, but uh, uh, for some reason, one reason for another, and he didn't come. Uh, it was a very impressive experience. And recently he was chosen to give a talk for the Hamner Lecture Series, which is the most prestigious series and hosted by the history department because of the pandemic and he hasn't been able to do it. Uh, hopefully uh, he's gonna come and in the fall, uh, let's hope. Uh, anyway, so um, and his record speaks for itself and he's uh, uh, highly productive. I just want to single out and one of his most influential books is called The Chopsticks, A Cultural and Culinary History, published by Cambridge at his university press. It won a rave review by, uh, you know, some of the best known and uh, per per personages in, in the space of uh, Sinology. For example, Benjamin Elman at Princeton University he is one of the, uh, I believe, one of the top scholars in Qing study of the entire United States, if not the top scholar. And then there's Ge Zhao Guang of uh, Fudan University. He's uh, also very well known in, in China, uh, highly respected. Okay, and so and and, and, he, and uh, Dr. Wang is also very active. I think uh, internationally. So, uh, and, and so, so he served on, on the board of International Commission for History and the Theory of Historiography. I think this, this is a, 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 under the um, in auspices of the United Nations, is that right? Or, or is uh, it? It's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's International Congress of Historical Sciences, which was founded about uh, in 1900. So mainly in Europe and also the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's quite it's, it's, it's quite prestigious and it's a, you, you were recently or you were the Secretary General, whatever. Yeah. The, yes, for ten years, <laughs> from yeah. two thousand five to two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so anyway, so um, without further ado, let's uh, introduce uh, Dr. Wang to you, and so you can take over, Dr. Edward Wang. Thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, we have been really uh, old and good friends for a long time, and uh, it's a, a very big honor for me to be invited to give this talk. And on, I mean, particular on this particular occasion that is uh, uh, in the eve of the Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year, which because the New Year is not just celebrated among the Chinese, but also by uh, the people in Vietnam in the Korean Peninsula and also in Japan. So in my talk, I will also talk about not just uh, uh, the way and the origin of chopstick use in China, but also around the so-called chopstick cultural sphere. So, and I, my main thesis is that uh, the introduction or the invention, introduction, the uh, dissemination of chopstick use as a way of eating um, changed over the centuries. And this change is going to be explored by, uh, by me in this talk, as well as, you know, uh, explained in my book. 
that is uh, has something to do with uh, has a lot to do with uh, the changing food way and also eating style. So I will begin by uh, uh, showing you some of the some basic facts about chopstick use, the appeal of, of chopsticks. Right? Uh, chopsticks, according to one archeological discovery back in 1993, uh, there was the one site which had about 42. The important thing is the plural, right? 42 pairs, but not, maybe not pairs, but the sticks, bone made sticks. And archaeologists believe that those were the earlier samples of chopsticks. So in, term, in, in terms of dates, it could be about 7,000 years ago in northern part of Jiangsu province, about 200 miles north of Shanghai. So now, now I mean, that was possibly the earliest origin of chopsticks. But again, as, as I will explain, the chopsticks were not just the eating implement. So if you are talking about the, 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 the strict definition of chopstick as an eating tool or eating utensil, then we, the history would be um, shorter. But anyhow, in the world today, you have about 1.6 billion people or over one fifth of the world population use chopsticks daily to uh, transport food. Because China itself has 1.4 billion and Japan had over uh, 123 million. Right? Then you have the people from Korean Peninsula, then also from Vietnam. So it was a very substantial segment of world population use chopsticks. So the title is, and my talk is, uh, uh, why chopsticks? Why? Because some of the people uh, have visited a Chinese restaurant and they found that uh, the chopsticks were the only kind of eating tool provided to them and they tried to use them. Some people also wanted to taste this, or, this authentic eating experience in a Chinese restaurant or in a, in a Japanese restaurant, but then they found that it was not so easy. But again, my argument is that if it's too difficult, then possibly chopsticks wouldn't be adopted even by the Asians. So chopsticks use is relatively easy to handle, right? So this is uh, possibly that uh, some people may have the same, uh, same experience. So the, um, then from the seventh century, you have this uh, formation of the chopstick cultural sphere due to mainly the influence of Tang Dynasty. And Tang history, of course, is the Professor Xiong's specialty. And the, the, due to the Tang Dynasty cultural influence, then one after another. I would say Vietnam possibly was exposed to this chopstick cultural sphere uh, much earlier, possibly in the Han Dynasty, because Vietnam before the, the, the 14th century, uh, Vietnam was ruled by China for about uh, 1000 years. But then Korean Peninsula was possibly around sixth century. And there were some archeological discoveries about some of the, the, the spoons and chopsticks, but people did not, Assert, you know, a certain whether those uh, were the gifts but from Chinese kingdoms or they were made in Korea. But anyhow, in the seventh century, then both archaeological evidence as well as historical texts prove that people began to use chopsticks across East and Southeast Asia. And then, thanks to the growing appeal of Asian foods, the first wave would be Chinese food from the post-war period became more and more popular. Then the second wave, which I think is also very important in promoting chopstick use, that was the uh, Japanese food. Because the fact is very clear, if you want to eat Japanese sushi, which is now getting so much popularity, then chopsticks might be the, the only tool that you can use because fork will break the sushi before you can put the put it in your mouth because you have to move the sushi from the plates to the, to, to the soy sauce, right? And, and also the wasabi and then place it in your mouth. And that transporting tour and requires chopstick use. But of course, in certain parts of Japan, such as Kyoto, people also have the tradition of use fingers right, to uh, eat sushi. So that was basically the, 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 uh, the, 
scope of the chopstick cultural zone or cultural uh, sphere, which was cons which consists of mainland China and Vietnam in Southeast Asia, then Japan as well as uh, uh, the Korean Peninsula, then in uh, Tibet as well as, as in Inner Mongolia, the the pink areas, meaning that the people use chopsticks as part of their eating tools. And that was also pretty necessary because I have in my research, I've been interviewing some people from that region and asking them whether uh, they thought that chopsticks are, in, are important to their eating experience. And most of them say that yes, it's important because that's the only tool they would use to eat vegetables. Then, my talk will actually begin with one, one question. With a spoon or with a spoon or chopstick were first invented in China, right? Because I said that chopsticks were discovered, or at least the, 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 the prototype of chopsticks were discovered so earlier. But my research also revealed that between the spoon and the chopsticks, the former, the spoon, was Invented earlier, slightly earlier, but much more important, was a primary tool of eating in the chopstick culture sphere. And the reason was that, that first of all, the reason was that the spoon had a different shapes in ancient China. It was called a ci or bi, which on the left side you can see, which is which shaped is more like a knife. And the knife can cut the uh, meat, cut the dishes, but as well as uh, transport uh, the grain food. So that's the earliest form. And then you have the other type of form, which in English might be called ladles, because those are big ones and uh, with a big toe, uh, a bowl and longer handle. And those were also invented in time. But why I say that the spoon was the earliest eating utensil in ancient China, it had a lot, lot to do with the food they eat. And when we talk about meat, a meal, right? We usually talk about, that's almost universal. We'll talk about two parts. One part would be what? One part be, would be the grain food, whether it's wheat or rice or like uh, maize, right? Those are the main, main food. And in, in, in Chinese and in Japanese, when people say that let's have something to eat, they would use the words like chifan, which means eat the grain food. But of course, you don't just eat the grain food. So the second part would be the so-called donuts, rice donuts or wheat donuts. Those are the, 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 the dishes people eat together with the meat. But which one was more, more important? Of course, the, 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 the grain food was more important in most of the cultures. So in ancient China, particularly in North China, when we believe chopsticks were invented first there, then millet, not wheat, not rice, was the main food, the staple grain food in North China, as well as in the Korean, uh, on the Korean Peninsula and, and Japan in ancient times. And the, that is the shape of millet. And in America, most people did not know millet. And some people, I always say some African-Americans possibly know about millet. Millet had a much smaller grains, had a different kinds. And as a matter of fact, in ancient Chinese texts, you have so many, say, uh, terms for millet attesting to its popularity. And the main, in terms of the culinary perspective, millet, is best cooked into porridge or grill because the grain size is smaller than rice. So when you eat millet porridge, especially if you want to eat it elegantly, of course you can lift the bowl and some, somewhat dump your, the, the millet porridge into your mouth. Some people do even today, right? But on the other hand, from very early on, people like to eat this with some manners. And when you do that, then spoon was the necessary tool. 
right? Chops just, you can shovel somewhat. If you raise your bow to your mouth, you can shovel the, 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 the millet porridge into your mouth with the assistance of chopsticks. Yes, you can do that, but it was not so elegant. So that's the reason why chopsticks were not the primary eating tool in ancient China. The reason was that it was not used for eating the main part of the meal, the grain food. But on the other hand, chopsticks were important as well as the spoon. Why? Because Look at those. Those are the eating vessels or the food vessels. And you can see they, they have like different shapes, right? But of all those shapes, one shape is the common. That is, they have legs. Why you have legs for those vessels? Of course, the legs were indicating that they were also the cooking utensils, that the people can have fire underneath. And also the last one that you can see on, uh, on the bottom, that also has a hood, has a lid, right? Why people like to eat? If you have the lid on, means what? The food hot, warm, right? So when you eat, you want to eat food hot. And the North China's climate actually somewhat encourage people to eat food with some liquid and also with hot you know, hot food. So food in ancient times can be cooked in a number of ways. Boiling was the most common way in China. Once utensils were invented, and that, that's very important. Before you see utensils were used, of course, people can have different ways. I mean, you have a, a one way is, uh, is like to have the, 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 the soil wrap the food, and then you have the, the, the whole thing right, baked or roasted on fire. And when the, the, the soil become dried and the food is also ready, right? That's one way, that's the earliest way before uh, utensils were, cooking utensils were invented. But on the other hand, in boiling food, chops could be used as tongs, stirrers. Let me see, we have to do this. Yeah, okay. Uh, but that's, then I don't see the, Maybe, maybe I still do, do, do that. Okay. This could be used as tons, stirrers, mixers, arrangers, strainers, right? Preventing scolding and soiling one's hand. Scolding is more important because if you drink hot coffee, you hold a cup and sometimes your hand, your fingers become like, you know, too hot for you, right? But you can, your, your, your mouth actually drink and drink the, 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 the sip the uh, hot coffee. So that means that the, the temperatures fingers can handle uh, is different from the temperature that your mouth can handle. So that's why utensils were important if you want to eat food hot. So that, that is why the reason that chopsticks were invented as well as the spoon. But the, as stirrers, as rearrangers, as mixers, the chopsticks were not simply for eating for transporting food to your mouth, right? So that's why I said, compared with other food utensils, chopsticks has this special kind of characteristic, which is that they could be used for cooking tool as well as eating tool. And as a matter of fact, that the, throughout the East Asia or the chopsticks culture sphere, people still do that. I'm pretty sure that uh, in the people in, uh, in this audience, the Chinese people possibly use chopsticks to what? Uh, to beat eggs. They don't use whisk, right? They use chopsticks to beat eggs. Of course, you can use fork to beat eggs too, but uh, most Chinese prefer actually using uh, chopsticks to beat eggs. So that means chopsticks are uh, a, a cooking tool. And of course, chopsticks has another, uh, have another advantage that is they're very economical and easy to make. And this photo, uh, it was supposedly uh, port portraying the items found in one of the Han Dynasty tombs. And uh, on top of one bowl, there was a pair of chopsticks made of bamboo. And then of course, bamboo chopsticks were pretty common. That the other samples were from the Ming Dynasty. Ming Dynasty was from 14th century to the 17th century. So throughout Chinese history, 
then the bamboo and the wood are very common materials for making chopsticks together with metal ones. And the reason why you have more metal ones and so on, which I, if I have time, I will uh, explain. But then also chopsticks are very easy, economical also meaning that chopsticks could be uh, made with other, other temporary materials. So you have some makeshift chopsticks. And one of what was the photo by the people, the, the, the laborers in Beijing today, as a matter of fact, they used to uh, do tricks from a tree and uh, then and as, temp, uh, as makeshift chopsticks to eat that lunch. The other one was a special type of like uh, a, 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 a stem, small stem. That was, I, I actually found it when I went to Okinawa and that's in their museum. So I took a photo of that and that was also used. As a, uh, as, a, as a makeshift pair of chopsticks. So they're very clear. Right? So chopsticks are very common. But then that's why it's, uh, uh, the chopsticks were invented early. The, but on the hand, chopsticks use, as I said, are mainly for the dishes, not the main food. So it's popularity dependent on one particular type of boiled food or the stew. And in Chinese texts, the classic of rice, you have this statement. It said the stew was eaten by all from the princess down to the common people without distinguishing of degrees, meaning from the poor to the rich people all eating stew. But stew can be different kinds. The stew have kind of totally meat stew or you can have only vegetables too. That will show the class. But then, chopsticks come, I mean, your first popularity came from uh, their use to eat the stew. Then again, from the same text, the classic of rights, you have these two statements. It say, the first says that the use chopsticks only when the stew has foodstuffs, I would say particularly vegetables. If the stew has no foodstuffs, then chopsticks should not be used. And the other one clearly show that the explanation that I gave, why chopsticks were not the primary eating tool when people eating millet, because it says clearly, do not use chopsticks in eating millet. Again, classic of, of uh, rice was, was, was targeting the, uh, the noble class. So they are teaching the nobles how to eat elegantly, right? So as I said, a millet could be uh, dumped into your mouth from the bowl directly without any eating tools. But again, if you want to emphasize eating manners, then spoon might be the best tool, not the chopsticks. So that's why it advised, enjoins that uh, uh, do not use chopsticks in eating millet because eating chopsticks in eating millet even if you hold the bowl to your mouth, the millet porridge might be dropped on your clothes, which would be messy. So this is not a recommended way, right? From the classical of rights. So another, another uh, evidence that we are talking about was the uh, making of chopsticks by uh, bamboo. And the most so people who know Chinese will see that uh, Chinese characters usually has two parts. One would be the radical, the other would be the, uh, the, the, the pronunciation part, right? And you can see that different ways of writing chapters in ancient China show that the bamboo and the wood were uh, the most common materials. And you have diff slightly different, uh, 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 a, um, different pronunciations, but in general, those are the uh, showing. But the why I emphasize that was because Bamboo and the wooden chopsticks were not frequently found in archaeological excavations. The reason, of course, they break down easily. So you have found more like metal and bone chopsticks, not so much the uh, wooden and the bamboo ones. But if you look at Chinese texts, the, the shape of the language, the, uh, the, the, the language is basically showing that uh, the most common materials are bamboo and wood. 
And I have shown you some to uh, actually uh, brick relief, stone carving in the brick relief that's uh, portraying the people using chopsticks to eat food. That was back in the Han Dynasty. Now you see, you see that. And clearly that uh, people began using. And also in the Han Dynasty, there was a, a very famous historical writing written by uh, Sima Qian, who was dubbed the father of history in China. And his book recorded how people use chapters to transport food. So you can see both archeological evidence and, uh, and uh, the, the historical text show that by the Han Dynasty, chapters already become necessary eating tools, but together with the spoon. So you have a set of eating tools in China, as we see now among the Koreans. Now I come to my sort of like a research discovery. The reason for chapter to challenge and eventually replace the spoon as the main eating tool among the people in the chapter's cultural sphere. And the first reason was that uh, the popularity or the wide adoption of millstone. When, when millstone became widely ad ad adopted from the first century, from the first century, again, proven by texts as well as written records, as well as material records, that uh, wheat, wheat became very popular in North China because wheat flour products in China are two important ones. One would be the noodles, the other would be the dumplings. And the both were eaten with chopsticks, not the spoon. And you can imagine, if you wanted to, that's the male stone, right? If, because if you want to eat, eat noodles, spoon would be useless. Spoon can be used to drink soup if you want to, just like if you go to a Japanese ramen restaurant, right? Yes they will also give you a spoon, but the spoon is mainly for drinking the soup, not for eating the noodles. And the other one, of course, is to eating the dumplings. And except in China, except children, most people would eat dumplings also with chopsticks. So the, so the ascent of chopsticks as an eating implement, the first reason was the uh, the popularity of wheat flour food. But of course, wheat flour food can be also made into what? Uh, uh, cakes, right? Pancakes and so on. And the pancakes and the cakes, you can use your fingers. Yes, that's fine. That's, that's fine. But again, if you want to eat food hot, then your fingers, as I said, cannot handle the hot temperature as well as your mouth does. So eating implements, became again necessary, right? Okay, that's the first reason. Second reason also has something to do with the millstone. That is the cooking oil, cooking oil. Cooking oil is important because you use the mill to mill uh, wheat, but you also use the mill to mill what? Ground like rape seeds, vet, uh, uh, vegetable seeds and so into oil and the oil became cooking oil. And with the cooking oil, you can do one now considered quintessential way of eating Chinese food that is stir fried dishes. But again, as I said, before that, before the invention of cooking oil, right? People use boiling, stew was much more important. But stir frying became popular, uh, became gradually popular. That's take about 300 years from maybe from the fourth century, but I have mentioned this particular book. It's, it's a very famous book in the sixth century. It's called Essential Skills for Commoners. And the six recipes were given dealing with this new cooking style, stir frying. And in particular, he mentioned cooking scrambled eggs, the way exactly as most people do today. That's talking about sixth century before except that he used what? Sesame oil, not like peanut oil or, or, I mean, or other people's, uh, or, or other kinds of oil. But in the way of cooking, if do it, that's essentially the same. So with the cooking stir-fried 
dishes, as you can see, people began to what, chop the food material, the ingredients into biteable sizes. I think for two reasons. One is a cultural reason, because very early on, using knife on the table is considered not so gentleman. Confucius and his disciples say that, well, knife is best to be kept in the kitchen. It's because it's not so civilized. It becomes too belligerent. So that's why. The other reason was that if you want to stir fry your, your dishes quickly, that's also the way of saving energy, right? Because if you bake or if you roast uh, food, sometimes you have to wait till the flame goes down, right? Otherwise you will burn the food and inside the food is not cooked, right? So everybody if doing any barbecue knows that. But the Chinese are, I would say clever, and China is cleverer in the way of using the flames to do the stir fry dishes. Once the flames are gone, they use that, 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 that heating source to cook the, say the meat or the rice or other food stuff. So smaller size or like, a, so I would say biteable size food, uh, food items in stir fry dishes will also help the cooking. So that's the second reason. And the third reason, has something to do with the tea drinking. And the tea drinking teas was supposedly to, uh, invented as early as the Han Dynasty, but clearly it was in the Tang Dynasty. In the seventh century, tea drinking became a national fair. Okay. And the tea drinking, of course, just like you, you, when you go to Chinese, Chinese Cantonese restaurant, in particular, called a dim sum restaurant, right? Dim sum means small eats. And the small eats are usually the foods provided in those restaurants for people to enjoy when they drink tea. So again, most people in China, I mean, from that time onward to say today, most people drinking tea, you can have an afternoon tea uh, with some cookies. So that's the Western way in China, of course, people like to eat it, particularly in, in, in Guangdong, in Canton area, uh, people like to drink tea as well as they are having their brunch, right? around noon time, around 11 to maybe three and so on. So they will have the small food, small eats. And this is uh, supposed to be the, the type of the small foods found in Tang Dynasty tombs. Right? And of course you have, today you have other much fancier ones, but this is just, I, I just took a, a photo, but I, of course dim sum has different types. And usually the dim sum food was small, and then the restaurant, possibly for saving cost, will only provide you with a pair of chopsticks, uh, which was also recorded actually in the not Tang Dynasty text, in a Song Dynasty text. And one person observed, very observant, he actually recorded it, say that restaurant used to provide a set of eating tools, the spoon and chopsticks. Nowadays, they only give you a pair of chopsticks. I think it's serving the purpose because you are eating noodles most time in those restaurants or drinking tea in the Tang and the Song dynasties. So chopsticks will be, be sufficient. And there'll be a fourth reason, but before I deal with the fourth reason, I will somewhat digress to talk about different shape, shapes of chopsticks. And, and some people can possibly tell that uh, the bottom part would be the Japanese chopsticks. And as a matter of fact, the, the first one, first pair on the bottom was disposable ones. And as a matter of fact, disposable chopsticks were indeed invented by the Japanese for two reasons. One was that Japan was covered about 80% by uh, forests. So wood, cheap wood, can be made into those disposal chopsticks, right? And they have plenty of wood. The second reason was religious and cultural. The Japanese, of course, believe their land is land of kamis. Kami means deities, deities all around them. So when you eat food, particularly in the religious festivals and so on, you are eating food together with the kami. So they have those shape of, of uh, 
chapters, both were, were painted, you know, were pointed. And they are saying that the kami are eating food with you. And once you eat the food, it is best that you break the chapters and throw into na nature to join, because your spirit would be attached to the chapters. So your spirit is better to be re re rejoining uh, that in, na in nature. So that's one way of uh, uh, the reason. But the, 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 the invention was, the, well, was not uh, taking place until the six, uh, six, 16th and 17th century. Uh, then, then the middle part would be the metal ones would be mainly the, the, uh, used in the Korean Peninsula. And the reason, again, I would say has something to do with the Tang Dynasty culture influence because so far, the chapters and the eating tools found in Tang Dynasty tombs in China were all metal ones. But you can explain that, uh, well, wooden ones were broken down, right? They were rotted. But the other reason could be that the metal ones are indeed, were indeed quite popular in Tang Dynasty China. When this eating custom spread to the Korean Peninsula, so Koreans did never change. Of course, metal ones can be more durable. That's another reason, right? So from, from that time on, and the Koreans always preferred metal ones. And then the, 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 the top ones would be the Chinese ones and also the Vietnamese ones, and uh, uh, they're longer. The longer has something to do with a, 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 a uh, eating habit that began to take shape in maybe 13th century, 14th century China. That is communal eating. Once you are communal eating, you are eating food, sharing with other people on a big table, then your chapter should be longer. And in my hair, I have another example for you too. If you have visited some of the hot pot restaurants in Sichuan province, in those restaurants, they will provide you a pair of much longer chopsticks to facilitate your eating. So in that, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the chopstick culture sphere, you can see several different type kinds. And you or some people may, may ask why the Japanese chopsticks are more pointed than the Chinese ones. And uh, given my experience, I mean, one explanation why they were pointed is because the, the Japanese eat more fish. The pointed ones can help you separate meat from the bones. And also from my eating Chinese food experience, then those pointed chopsticks are not strong enough for you to pick up stir fried Chinese dishes. So the Chinese have the bottom part painted, I mean, uh, uh, I, mean I mean, pointed, but not as pointed as the Japanese ones. So those are just some, some explanations. But the traditional style, as I said, in before the Tang Dynasty, people in China also ate the same way as the Koreans do today. That is using both the spoon and the chopsticks. And in ancient China, left is supposedly a little bit higher than the right. So the spoon being the main tool to handle the green food was placed on the left. The second photo was actually taken uh, by someone in North Korea. Right. So again, same thing, South and North Korea, same thing that they have the spoon on the left, chops on the right. Again, showing that chops uh, was mainly for handling the non-green food, the rice donors. Then you have the exclusive style. So in the chapter culture sphere, you have the traditional style that was mainly held by Koreans. Then you have the exclusive style, most Japanese were very proud of, but again, I was in South China and also in Vietnam, that people also do the same thing. That is, they only use chapters to eat food, to finish their meals. But again, that has a, a kind of a process of transformation. Initially, when in the seventh century, the Tang Dynasty sent envoys to China to learn about 
all aspects of culture and the political institutions. And then that time they learned to use both the spoon and the chopsticks, as I said. But after Tang Dynasty's influence waned, then uh, the Japanese developed their own way. That is, they only use chopsticks. So they thought that this, uh, this whole set, right, was aristocratic style. So they only used that. And nowadays, of course, even the most expensive Japanese food called kaishaku ryori still use only a pair of wooden chopsticks. And the Japanese also produce different kinds of chopsticks. One for like uh, lovers, one for like uh, uh, one, one, one pair for like an uh, old couple, for their wedding anniversary, of course, you also have wedding uh, chopsticks and so on. All kinds of ones. Those are called artistic chopsticks. Then the combining style. The combining style was uh, mainly seen in the pink area, if you remember the second slide, the pink area. That is the Mongolia steppes and the Southeast Asia of modern times are used together with a knife or a spoon or both. So you have this. They use fork because they eat more meat. And the meat would be like if you go to go to Mongolia and they all have like big plates, right? The meat will be placed on the on the on the on the plates. They use your knife to cut the meat uh, for individual eating, right? And then the chopsticks would be mainly for eating vegetables. But of course, in modern restaurants, then some of the restaurants would, care, I mean, tear, uh, uh, care for the people who don't who are not accustomed to using chopsticks. Then they will give you fork and knife as well. And the evolving style, I would say, was mainly seen in China. And as as I said before, that uh, chopsticks were and are still used together with a spoon as prescribed by the classical rites. However, their roles became gradually reversed. Chops are now used for eating rice and a spoon for soup or stew. Like that's, nowadays, you can see that. So you can see also the placement. Did you see the placement? The spoon was on the right side. Chops were on the left side, meaning the status has been change, right? That was very interesting. Evolving style. Now, now I'm going to, to, to talk about evolving like eating style. And you can see this is talking about the murals from, in, from the, the Tang Dynasty tombs. And you can see this clearly that uh, the way of chops placement was also very similar to the ones in Japan, right? And this is talking about individual eating. Right, the food would be served to your plates. They sit on benches, right? And the reason for people to develop this or even adopt this communal eating style, you need to see the use of furniture. That people need to sit up on high chair and also put the food on the table. The reason is that in Han Dynasty and uh, before, you can see this. In Han Dynasty, eating scenes show people eating on the floor. So if people are eating on the floor, the most convenient way is for food to be served to your own bento box, to your own like plates. Because otherwise, if you want more food, you have to crawl somewhere to the center of the, of the hall, eating hall, right? I mean, it's, it's not, not so, 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 so pleasant. Okay, so that's why, and, and the, in Japan, of course, before the middle of the 19th century, and the Japanese did not have like eating tables, dining tables. So they, they still keep this individual eating style. But in China from the Tang Dynasty, particularly towards the end of the Tang Dynasty, from the 10th century on, due to the influence from Central Asia, the Chinese began to use 
dining table as well as chairs. And I will show you some of the uh, pictures. So Han Dynasty, you can see the people eating uh, ate food on the floor, right? And then you can see that so that's the Tang Dynasty, right? You can see that people are eating on the benches, but then you, hold, you see that chopsticks were also uh, placed horizontally, right? And gradually, so you can see this, but it's a gradual process. But though that time, you can see the tables are still too low. If your tables are too low, it's not very convenient for you to share food with others. You, I mean, you, you can try, but, but it's difficult. So, and this is, this is the, the very famous picture. Of course, uh, uh, Victor Xiong, our uh, distinguished colleague, knows this very well, right? That's Han Xizai's Night Revels. Uh, that was the post town painting. And you can see that people began to eat, not just uh, to, to sit, not just on the benches. They sit on chairs because it has a back. But one difference was that the tables are still like a sofa tables, not high enough. Difficult for people to share food. So they, they are possible to still share food, but not in a common place. So it's a gradual process. But then in the Song Dynasty, did you see this? Very clearly, also from a mural in a Song Dynasty tomb. Mural painting showing that, at least from, uh, from the scene, of course, that was a couple. So at least from the family eating, that people began to share food. The table's height was raised. And there's another force of change that is taking place. That's a population rise in China. And then you can see that uh, China, of course, is still today, I'm still holding as the most populous nation in the world, right? If you look at this, China not, does not, did not have a lot of population before the 14th century or 15th century. You can see that Han Dynasty is the highest was about 60 million, 60 million. Han Dynasty, again, it down to like 50 million. The Tang Dynasty is around like 53 million. Okay, 53 million. It was in the Song Dynasty. The Chinese population for the first time went over 100 million. The reason was that the, the time the Chinese began to adopt early ripening rice from Champa, which was southern part of Vietnam. So with this, they, they, can, they can harvest rice twice or even third times a year. So the population grow. But then you know that that's a Mongol invasion. Chinese population lost about 40%. So when we're talking about Black Death in Europe, yeah, Black Death was possibly transport, I mean, transmitted by the Mongols, but it hurt the, China, the Asian population first. So Mongols have killed a lot of Chinese, but they also, possibly were killed by the disease. So Yuan Dynasty lost on to like about 60%. Those of course were estimates. That Ming Dynasty beginning was part of 70 million or so. So, so in, in, in this chart, people say 60 million, but gradually it grew up again. And for two reasons, one was the rice became more cultivated. So you have more arable land being kind of uh, 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 re reclaimed. The other was the importation of New world foods. Sweet potatoes, corn were much more favored than the potatoes, and then the peanuts, and so on. And of course, chili pepper, then tomatoes, all those things are from this world, right? The Americas. And they begin to help Chinese population. And then in the Qing, in the Qing Dynasty onward, then of course you can see clearly that uh, the Chinese population climb up even almost vertically. Right. And on a day-to-day -day level, then you can see the adoption, the popularity of the so-called table of eight immortals, meaning the table can hold, right? Can, can sit eight people at the same time, so indicating the population growth. But the eight table, uh, table of eight immortals were not named, were not in a way not invented even before the 14th century. So it's from the 14th century onward that Chinese population uh, became like increased and eventually that will also 
had impact on the eating style. So it's from the Ming Dynasty. Ming Dynasty is from 14th century. But eating together then separately had it become the predominant way of eating, regardless of class. Then I have some, uh, first is textual evidence. You have a Korean guy who visited China in the 17th century. He had this observation in his journal. He said, in ancient time, people used spoon and chopsticks to eat food as recorded in histories and the biographies. Our country also followed this custom. However, when the central plain, meaning China, was in chaos, hundreds and thousands of military officers left there and came east to Korea. When eating food, regardless of how it was cooked, they only used chopsticks, never a spoon. I don't know when this way of eating began. It was said that the Ming Emperor Taizu once vowed that before he defeated his rival Cheng Youliang, he would not dare using spoon to eat and drink. He wanted to show his resolve. From then on, eating without the spoon gradually became adopted. Though I don't know whether this story was believable. Right. So from a foreigner's perspective, he was dumbfounded. Why? I mean, we learned this from you. You need to eat the food in a set of eating tools. We have been following this religiously, but now you give it up. And why? Why? I would say that has a lot to do with the population growth as well as the, the communal eating style being adopted. And then you have the Ming and the Qing dynasty, late imperial paintings showing this very clearly. People began to share food. Now, so that's the fourth reason I would say that stand of chapter as an eating event. It's, uh, I would say, the final kind of a blow to the status of the spoon. The spoon now was downgraded to what? Only the soup spoon, no longer the green food spoon. So basically is that, and also has something to do with the rice, the food way. The rice became stickier. So the chops can be used to move rice in clumps. And if you ask your Korean friends, and I have been doing that whenever I see a Korean friend, because their custom says very clearly that you need to use the spoon to transport rice. Chops are only transporting non-green food, the dishes. And I see it in the Korean soap opera or movies, as well as asking them, they say that's well, in informal settings, we use chopsticks to handle both. But it's much, much more convenient, right? If you can move the clumps of rice into your mouth and you also use the chopsticks to, 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 to transport other foods, then why do you use the spoon? So the, the requirement was mainly for public eating. If you want to show that your plan is in front of your boss, or if you are in-laws, that's what we were doing. But again, but in, in China, in South Korea, and of course in, in Japan, then people don't do that anymore. So that is the rice became another way or the communal eating, that's another reason for people to, to share food. This is the photo is about Japan, uh, 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 Vietnamese eating food. And matter of fact, of course, that has to have something to do with uh, showing your plan is that you don't treat others friends as like uh, strangers. So it's, it's a way of kind of a warming up relationship. Just like, I mean, you know, around the world, of course, if you have lunch with people and of course that's, it's not just for eating, but also for warming up the relationship. So in, in, in China, of course, be invited in, in Vietnam, be in, invited if you have to sell sort of like you separate kind of uh, uh, eating tour that was uh, considered not as polite. Then the eating spot, uh, a hot spot, with chopsticks also became very important. The way of you, uh, the chopsticks, because the, the, the stew and then later become mutton fondue, this shui yang rou, right, was particularly in interesting, right? And using, that is you, you, you clutch the food, uncooked raw food materials, food in, in, uh, ingredients to the soup, boiling soup, sizzling the food 
and then you use chops to pick up the food stuff, cook the food, uh, food stuff, then dip it in your sauces. And so the chops just became indispensable. So that's the modern way of uh, eating this. And you can see also that the chops are longer than the usual ones. About 25 or 27, say, uh, uh, centimeters. So eating together as a family now, early 20th century, then it's become so common, right? And now the, the reappearance, I would say possibly should be the, re the reappearance of spoon, that is the soup spoon. So during the 18th century, a porcelain spoon appeared in China and also being kind of adopted in the cultural sphere. So the position or the status of eating tours in China was reversed. So chapstick became now the primary eating tool. And now I will end my talk with some general eating etiquette with chapsticks. First of all, I'm not used to make noise, to draw attention or to gesticulate. So don't do that, right? Oh yeah, making gestures and so on. And also chops are not used to move bowls, uh, uh, bowls or and, you know, plates. You best use, use your fingers. Uh, and you're not used to toy with one's food with dishes in common, right? And chops are not used to, even if you eat like a meatball, at least the proper way is not like pierce the meatballs with your chops. But sometimes, of course, accidents happen, right? Because you want to, you want to clutch the meatballs and they fall. So it could be a problem. And then to keep them off the table entirely, the chops rest can be used to keep the points off the table. So that can be rest. But horizontally was mainly for individual eating. But once the communal eating became popular, and chops is one sort of like a pointing to the to the to the center of the table. And the last one was possibly the most important one. Chops should not be left standing vertically in a bowl of rice or other food. Any stick-like object pointed upward resemble the incense sticks that some agents use as offering to deceased family members. Certain funeral rites designate offerings of food to the dead using standing chapters, such as in Japan. The last bowl of rice to the dying person would have a pair of chapters vertically stand in the rice. So among the Asians, people don't do that. The chops vertically in the bowl, would you be con considered not so, uh, so uh, plight and uh, also bring some mis uh, bad fortune. So this is the, basically the general eating etiquette with chops. And you can also find uh, those things also in Wikipedia and so on. But it, it's, uh, the, that was the universal way. 